Uh, this is my story of how I came to be involved in the um, 1981 London Marathon. Um, I'd always liked running. I competed my first race in July 1971. I think it was the 100 metres of the um, uh, Knights of St. Columba Sports. July 71, uh, I lost. Um, so there we are. Um, but I love watching. I love watching Olympics. Um, you know, I remember the first one was at 68 and 72. Um, uh, and I, you know, those events I really loved, you know, and, um, <clears throat> uh, I love the excitement. I remember 71, actually, one of the things that first 71 European Championship, David Bedford led the whole race round and, um, and then was eaten up in an unbelievable last lap by Tenyon, I think, uh, the Finn. Um, Steve Prefontaine in 72, you know, so I was always into, into running, watching running and then, and then running. Um, and, uh, I wanted to be good at it, but, you know, it wasn't happening, you know, and, uh, I, I was knocked out of the heats of the Harlow primary school 100 meters in 73, you know, I couldn't even get into a final there, you know, that's what I was, you know, but, um, um, but I, you know, I'll get to London Marathon in a second. It's just, um, but I then you know, got into senior school and, and then probably about from, you know, got better at it. And it was um, from that period of around 74 uh, onwards through to about 78. Uh, that was a period, you know, which I then joined Harlow Athletics Club and then came under the wing of uh, Nat Fisher's middle distance group. And I, you know, it was really hard. And again, you know, really hard, but I really, really enjoyed it, you know, and those, those middle distance training sessions of 10 times 400 and 16 times 200 seared in my brain, you know, and, uh, and I guess I was just like the kid tagging on the back. I was always the youngest, but always tagging on the back, you know, and I've written pieces about all the runners and the great runners. And I was just a bog standard. Now I say bog standard, you know, I got to six in the Southern England championships, you know, and, you know, I was a grade two, um, never grade one, but a grade two at things like 800 meters, um, long jump as well. So I was 800, 400 runner. And that was really, um, um, where I, or, you know, that was the standard I got to. So I peaked about 76, 77. Um, but I found it hard. I always found it hard. And I think, uh, I took 78 off because I wanted to concentrate my O levels because I wasn't, you know, I was always a, no natural talent, struggling, et cetera, et cetera. And so in many ways, that standard, that grade two standard, as I call it, which for myself, I'm very proud of, you know, running, as I said, you know, uh, 800 meters. Um, but so I probably never got to that. I didn't get to that standard again, took 70 out to do my O levels. And then it was the A levels really, because, you know, I wanted to get to university. I'm not sure why, but I wanted to get there because I just thought it was something to achieve. Um, but that again, so I went from the kid who was struggling at the back of the, the middle distance group to the kid in the A level group, you know, with a very, very brilliant other students. Uh, doing A level, seem to know Paradise Lost and Chaucer and Shakespeare, and I was struggling at the back. So that's that. Um, so consequently, you know, I made a dog's breakfast, i.e., failed A levels. And um, so August 1980 um, was a disaster for me. And so, you know, taking stock, I remember sit going back home, taking stock of my life and thinking and speaking to um, uh, teachers at St. Mark's School and say, like, I, I want to resit. I'm not giving up. So that was September 1980. I'm not giving up here. You know, uh, I don't know if I have any choice or it's just my instinct, whatever. Um, and so, and then I sort of think about the London Marathon. Now, the furthest I'd re run on the track was 3,000 meters, once very badly and got lapped. Um, and then cross country. Uh, so that's, that's where that was framed so the idea of right i'll really realistically we're going to run 25 and a half miles outside my comfort zone um and so i sort of tinkered at things really you know i didn't i was thinking about going i just tinkered from september but again the priority for me was my a levels you know because i had an offer uh, from sterling university in scotland uh, and i've been up there in a beautiful campus and a running track around the lock which I was told was made for Lindsay MacDonald, who was in the Moscow Olympics in 1980. Um, and that's what I wanted to do. Um, so I, you know, entered the London Marathon. I got into this London Marathon and uh, training was so-so. I don't think I had, you know, I should have gone back to the club, Harlow Athletics Club, but I didn't. Um, and then uh, I, um, 
uh, potted about at my training um, because again it was the A-levels um, and I guess the pivotal moment I would, I'd do an eight mile here a 12 mile there a six you know etc but um, I knew I ran out of gas really quickly that was the thing for me anyway um, March uh, the key thing was my A-level English and on March the 3rd I got it I got it. Um, I reset it, got it. It was brilliant. And down to a teacher called Mrs. Pieris, Judy Pieris. And, um, uh, you know, I was going, you know, got my A. I thought I'd mention that. Got up and going off to uh, university. So I was so relaxed. I was relieved and brilliant. Um, I just, just see that, uh, uh, horse running around a marathon. That wasn't me. Um, uh, but, um, brilliant. And now I'm going to, and I'm so relaxed thinking, I'm just going to do some sessions. And I did some running sessions. Um, I'll just see how things go. And so stayed overnight in, um, in Streatham with my brother, uh, my late brother, Jared and, and, um, uh, June, uh, his wife and, um, and turned up to this London marathon and there I was. And, um, uh, and so. I couldn't quite figure out what, you know, and I got out of um, Greenwich Park. I thought, why are people watching this? And uh, people watching on the sidelines, you know, I found that interesting. But um, I really enjoyed um, the first part, you know, and it was one of these things I was hoping to get somewhere under three hours, um, 42 minutes, you know, for six miles, um, you know, and, and 10 miles was going fine. And then I hit stomach cramps, really bad stomach cramps, Um and thought I had a horrendous four miles and um, thought I was going to drop out. I remember seeing Desmond Lynham at Tower Bridge. Am I going to drop out? Uh, no, you know, because I'd, um, and I think I was, uh, I wasn't thinking then, but I'm going to put this into my history that there's the line from the 1968 Olympics where the Tanzanian runner and John Stephen Akindi, um, he fell at the halfway mark and he finished in 3.25 um, and he said, about, you know, with this dislocated knee, he says, my country didn't send me 5,000 miles to start, but the country sent me 5,000 miles to complete the race. Um, so, um, I just knew after that horrendous, uh, four mile, four mile, five miles, you know, that my race, I'm, 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 not, I'm deleting the grizzly bits here. Um, I felt better after four, uh, about the 14 mile mark, 15 mile mark, and then thought, right, I just want to finish this. And I knew that nothing would be, anyway, and that was it. It was just about going from 14, 15, you know, and the miles and, um, got to Tower of London and just near there were two people who were at school with me, Ben King, Roddy O'Shea. Nice to see. I felt like I hadn't seen anybody in years. In fact, it was just, you know, a number of hours, but, um, and then go down the embankment. And then it was the moment when you're hitting the home straight bit. Um, I'm sure somebody started sprinting past me who was younger than me. And don't forget, I was only 19. I was a teenager, um, so I'm very proud to be one of the youngest of the first ever London. Uh, but I kicked him. I thought, you know, and I, it was at home straight. I think the home straight was the bit where I, ah, oh, you know, just like the telly, you know, and you just sometimes want those moments. It's just like something on the telly. Um, and finished, you know, and, uh, uh, a slow three hours, 46 minutes, 11 seconds and, um, got home. And, uh, I was always impressed with, when I was in the bus afterwards, there was Sarah Green and Peter Duncan. Peter Duncan ran it. I think he ran about 310. I'm very impressed with. Um, and there were kids wanting autographs and they were so patient, so patient. And I was very impressed. Um, and, um, just seeing Cutty Sark, 42 minutes. What's going to go wrong? Um, and I was, I got home, etc. And the next day, actually, I was at school and, um, uh, Kelvin Evans, God rest his soul, the head of PE. He said, how'd you get on, Casey? And I went, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I finished. He said, well, it's a bit like saying you finished in 800 metres. You watched your time. And I said what my time was. And he said, you clearly didn't train properly. And he was right. I clearly didn't train properly. Um, I didn't respect the distance and the distance didn't respect me. And um, and I never really mentioned the race because it was a bad race. Why would you mention a bad race? I've got plenty to say about good races I had. Um, but um, and that was it until I guess the last couple of years really you know people sort of time marches on and um uh and my running after that I did two marathons in 82 and then figured out this really is um 25 and a half miles and um uh although he'd come second in the under 20s in Horsforth near Leeds um and uh after that every year I'd 
I jogged, I guess it would be. So from 1983, I'd always run. I love the hills of Scotland and Stirling and Edinburgh. Um, and wherever I've been around the world, I've um, run. Um, and so it's meant an awful lot to me. Um, and that's what I, you know, um, yeah, right through through the, these periods. And um, um, and I'm wearing this uh, top says Parkrun and Beyond because the Parkrun has been really important. And even though it hasn't it's been a year since we've um run it and i'm oh, the park run and um and actually a really proud moment for me can i just say this you know is is when the i run my hundred park run i've done 221 um the hundred park run um i wrote a piece for park run magazine called enjoy the view and i talked about running my relationship with running and said that at some stage me because i guess around 77 i think in my heart thought you're all right, kid, but you, you're not good enough. And therefore, we have to reset why you're doing this. And and I learned to love the countryside of Harlow, you know, from, you know, wherever I'm running and, and Foster Street and Magdalen Laver, uh, Eastwick, et cetera, the store. And I love that. And so enjoying the view was clearly up, further up on my, um, my list. And I, I saw, and so I wrote a piece of National Park Run and it was actually, my hundred park run, but it was also again twenty March twenty seventeen, so it would have been thirty odd years since the um, London Marathon, whatever it was then, thirty seven or thirty eight. And when I put the they put the piece on face on uh, Twitter, underneath the comment was made by Sport England, which just put wow, just wow. And I then thought that's great because I really am getting a wow for just sticking in there. And I think the the A level story is just sticking in there, and um, London Marathon was just about me sticking in there. And and sometimes here I am in twenty twenty one. I'm a journalist. I run um, um, two online newspapers, and I guess uh, I don't think I'm going to win any Pulitzer prizes. But sometimes people say, you know, um, praise me for my doggedness, you know, <laughs> which I don't think is. Pray, you know, damning with faint praise. I, I'm sort of quite proud of that. So, um, so that's you know my that's him. That's him being dogged. Um, I'm not with the leaders, um, but to everybody, you know, and I'm delighted. I'm not delighted to be in lockdown, but the, throughout the whole year, seeing so many people out running, and um, and I hope uh, it, it continues in any shape or form. And it is about enjoying the view, enjoying your running. Um, whether you want to burst your lungs uh, or just jog. And I think that's what, um, and um, the people I've interviewed, you know, there's seven of us. It's been great for me to interview them and me to do the final piece here. And I think, um, um, and, we're, and I think we're all very proud of uh, having run in the first ever London marathon. And um, we, uh, you know, and I, uh, I hope to do one more. I'm, I'm hoping to do next year's. Uh, I'll be 60 then. And so from the teenage kid to being 60, I think would be, uh, would be, um, would be pretty cool. And, uh, but still enjoy running. I'm very proud of it and enjoy the view. Thank you.